come down here and talk about people, but the pain is that they are not alive. That we would discuss the deceased, the dead, the murdered, the killed. I believe that if America has not broken your heart, then you don't love her enough. Name after name tonight has been spoken by colleague after colleague, and dear God, every single name is a son or daughter. It is a brother or sister. It is a family member. It is, they are a person, part of a community, and they are dead. But this is not just any limited list. It seems to grow like a cancer on the soul of our country. You take my age, 51 years old, well, in just the time of my life, the death in our country has been something like has never before been seen in even a country at war because the people that have died, the human beings that have lost, the family members that have been slain, their total number in just my lifetime add up to more than all of the Americans that have died in every single war from the revolution to our current wars in the Middle East. And so my friends and my colleagues have read name after name after name, but the painful, heartbreaking reality is we could have taken hour after hour over days after days to name the total that have died in my lifetime. And, and the heartbreak, the stories, they, they have to stagger you when you hear the testimony. On March 1st, Caden Alex Peak, who was four years old, and his brother Mason Paul Peak, who was three years old, were gunned down, killed in Warsaw, Missouri. Jennifer Garcia. 21 years of age. Charlie Borbon Lopez, 20 years, killed in Portland, Oregon. Say their names, say their names, say their names. Kobe Hilliard, 19, killed in Temple, Texas. April Williams, 21. Her mom, Tammy Briggs, 46, killed in Georgia, in Augusta. Say their names. Say their names. Christine Ruffin, age 61, killed with a gun in Palm City, Florida. Delquan Daniels, 23 years old, Killed with a gun in Rochester, New York. Say their names. Say their names. Jerson Aleman Vasquez, 19, killed with a gun in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Lionel Darling, age 39. Renisha Dotson, age 30, killed with guns. Killed with guns. Say their name. Say their name. Maritza, Romahili, Panagua, Paniagua, age 20, killed with a gun in Los Angeles. Marlon McAllister, age 51, killed with a gun in Chicago. Mashaila Marie Meredith, 19, killed with a gun in El Dorado, Illinois. Victor Booker, age 20, killed with a gun in Phoenix, Arizona. Ronald Jeffrey Leroy Jones Jr., age 25, killed with a gun in Columbus, Ohio. Say their names. Say their names. This is the question of our country. What is the quality of our mercy? How courageous is our empathy? How destitute is our compassion? How anemic is our love for one another that this many Americans are dying 
hour after hour, day after day, month after month, year after year, the carnage in our country like never before seen in humanity. And we do nothing as a society in a government that was formed to, to, for more perfect union, for domestic tranquility, for justice at the top of our federal government's constitution is the very ideal that we are for the common defense. Say their names. Do we honor them? Do we love their survivors? Love is not sentimentality, it's not words. It demands something. It necessitates sacrifice. And I, and I can't tell you, I am one of those folks who, serving in the mayor of a, an American city, would have my police officers show me the films of murders from our cameras, human beings being shot and killed. How could it not Shake the core of your soul. How could it not rip open wounds that cannot be healed? My colleagues reading names of people, children lost, kids lost to suicide, bodies mangled, people paralyzed. How could it not call to your conscience? How could it not demand from all of us not to sit idly by and watch and witness we are wounded as a society. We are hurting. There is pain that is unspoken. And that is so dangerous. In 2018, Shahad Smith, I knew him well. I used to live in high-rise projects at the top of my block. There was a group of boys there led by this young man named Hassan Washington. Hassan was brilliant, he was funny, he had a sharp wit, he had charisma. Shahad was one of the young men in high school that hung out with him, and in the lobby of my buildings, I would come home and I would see them there. And I'll tell you, in 2018, I make it to the United States Senate, and I get a call from Jimmy Wright, police officer from those buildings who, it's a beautiful man, and he was shaken. They killed Shahad on my block where I live as a United States senator at the top of my block. And I'll never forget how Jimmy described it. He says, Corey, I talked to the police officer who was killed with an assault rifle. And he said, Corey, the police officer told me his head exploded. And, and I, 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 I had to hold on to something because most of that kids from that lobby, the children I watched grow up in my eight years living in those projects, in those buildings. Black boys in a world where there's so much assault. The first of them to die I, I, 2005, I would come home at night. I was chasing my dream to be the mayor of the largest city in my state. I was getting ready to run for office, and I came home, and I smelled marijuana in the lobby. Now, we live in a country where it's a lot different watching kids at Stanford or Yale smoke pot and have no worries but for inner city black kids, I'll tell you right now, they have no margins for experimentation. And I said to myself, oh, I, I, I gotta intervene here. So I started asking the, 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 them, let's, let's get out of this lobby, let's go do something, let's go to movies, let's eat. And I'll never forget, I made a mistake, y'all. I, I said, you guys choose a movie. That was a mistake, because they took me to something called Saw Two. Do not see that movie. 
And we went out to dinner, diners, Andrew's Diner. I remember the conversations with them. I asked them what their dreams were. And this moved me because their dreams, they were humble dreams. And I said that I would connect them with, with mentors. And, and I had all these plans about how to help these young men get out of the danger zone. And then I got too busy with my campaign. And I remember feeling a little guilty that I was too busy to follow through on the commitments I had made. And I... And I I consoled myself that I was running for mayor, and when I become mayor, God, I'll be able to help all children in the city. I'll, 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 I'll step up then. Let me just get through this campaign. Well, I would still come home at night, and the boys weren't mad at me or anything like that. They, they would still greet me and cheer me on when I came into the lobby. Shahad and Hassan, it was amazing. They would lift me up. One day they had lawn signs, my lawn signs, waving them, and it formed a parade line, and I walked down waving them, got in the elevator until I realized where did they get those lawn signs from? They're, they're kind of expensive. I, I, I ended up winning. And I had death threats on me. And when you're elected office, death threats, you have security. And next thing you know, I have police officers stationed in, in the lobby. And the boys weren't there anymore. They didn't want to hang out where the police officers were. And I didn't think too much about it because I was running at full speed as a new mayor. 36, 37 years old, the violent crime in our city was peaking. There were too many shooters in that hot summer. I will never forget. And I would run to every street corner I could where there was a shooting in our city. And I would stand there and I would say, this is not who we are. This is not America. This is not Newark. We're going to overcome this. And I would give street-level sermons telling people about the vision for a city. And God, we would eventually turn down the violence. But in those early days, a month into my office, I show up on a street corner. There is a body covered by a sheet and another one being loaded on the back of an ambulance. And I barely paid attention to the humanity on the street. I didn't even ask for the names. I too was busy. I was too busy ministering to the living. I get home that night to steal a couple hours of sleep in my early days as mayor, and I'll never forget sitting in my bedroom with my Blackberry going through it, and I saw the name on the homicide report. In that moment in my life, something broke in me that will never fix. It wasn't an anonymous name that I didn't know. It wasn't just a cold issuance of another crime in a big city. The name was Hassan Washington. Four floors below me, he lived with his grandma. Kid, I promised to help with his dreams. I will never forget his funeral for as long as I live. Perry's funeral home, God bless them, those professionals. I, I entered that funeral home as the newly minted mayor, and I was so upset when I saw it was in their basement room because going into that room was like descending into the bowel of a ship, a narrow staircase, and I... I I get into this room, we were piled in on top of each other like we were chained together in grief and people were crying. Everybody was showing up, everybody was there for what is an American tradition almost every day, another boy, another black boy in a box killed by a gun. And I wish I could tell you, Mr. President, that I was strong in that moment. I wish I could tell you I was mayoral, that I was the leader, the father of the city, but I wasn't. I felt shame. I felt hurt. I felt embarrassment. I, I tried to lean on other people in that room. There were folk I had known for years, but finally I had enough. I had to run. I left there. I jumped in my SUV, drove to my new office in City Hall, and for the first time, not the last, but the first time as mayor, of New Jersey's great and largest city, I sat in that office and I wept over a dead boy. And all I could think about 
was climbing through the feelings of shame and hurt and pain. All I could think about was that funeral, that basement room, packed full of people. All of us were there for his death. Where were we for his life? What a morbid thing we've been doing here tonight. Reading the names of dead people killed in our country. Hoping that somehow, somehow we can change. Well, I will tell you this right now. We are in a distraught moment in our nation where most of us agree on solid steps. It won't solve all the problems, but it would make a difference. It would save a Hassan. It would save a Shahad. It would save the three and four-year-olds. I've names I've read. The question is how courageous are we? How much do we truly love one another? What will we do? This is a moment in American history that could be the inflection point. If we act now, we can end some of this nightmare. If we fail to do anything, we'll be back here again. The list of the dead will be longer. The heartache and the pain and the wounds and the grief and the sorrow and the shame will be deeper in America's, in America, the world's greatest country. We must demand of each other a greater love. We must end the poverty of empathy. We must free ourselves from this prison, from this dungeon. We must release ourselves from these chains. We must demand that this nation be the nation we want it to be, be the nation we hope it for be, we should be, be the nation that those in military uniforms die for, a nation where we make real the greatest principles of humanity, the greatest calling of every faith that there is, not words, but real, true manifestation of the principle and the call Will we be silent? Will we be ignorant? Will we avoid? Will we do nothing? Will we be passive? Or will we truly be a nation that loves one another? I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut. Marsha Reitman Curry from New York. Mitchell Wright, Jr. from Missouri, Nicholas Tarpley from Pennsylvania, Reuben Lewis III, California, Rice Wingate Bay, Maryland, Robert Crochier, Massachusetts, Samuel Lamont Smith Williams, Tennessee, Spencer Wilcox, Oregon, Anthony Castillo, New York, President, we didn't come close to finishing this list tonight. We didn't make a dent in the list of those names of the people who have died from gun violence in 2021 alone, a year in which almost 10,000 people have died in less than three months from suicides and homicides and accidental shootings. It's a choice. None of this is inevitable. Almost all of it is preventable. It only happens here in the United States of America because other countries make different choices. Congress goes for the next two weeks on a district work period. We wanted to come to the floor tonight to make clear that we are not going to forget those who have died through the inaction of this body their national leaders, that we're going to renew our commitment to be better and to change and to begin that process in the wake of 
the shootings in Boulder and Atlanta by making sure that everybody hears the names of those who have died. I yield to Senator Blumenthal to wrap up for the evening. Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut. There is no last word tonight. There is no final saying here. There are no final names. Noah Beller, Tito Roman, Ayala Eubanks, Dominic Boston, Brad Kale, James Ray. We could be here a long time. But the tragedy is there will be more names, a hundred more at this time tomorrow night. And every one of these names is a future cut short. Every one of them is a life that could have given so much, bringing more light and joy, pride, grace, dignity. My colleagues have come to the floor with great eloquence. And I want to thank them. But the most eloquent part of tonight are the names. And we should take inspiration from the courage of their families, the strength of survivors, the ad advocates and activists who are forming a political movement that is creating ripples, turning into waves that will overcome. They will overcome the intransigence and cowardice of colleagues who failed to heed the American public. And they will be held accountable. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Let's have a quorum. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.